Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, starring award-winning real estate coaches and number one international best-selling authors, Tim and Julie Harris. This is the number one daily radio show for realtors looking for a no BS, authentic, real-time coaching experience. What's really working in today's market, how to generate more leads, make more money, and have more time for what you love in your life. And now your hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Three, two, one, and we're back, Julie. It is October the 4th. Let's get our big announcements out of the way first. Yes. Um, We will be in Miami. Uh, this week on the Thursday the seventh. Thursday the seventh. Thank you. And we are we are going to be speaking at a C five event, mm-hmm. which is taking place at the hotel, the U- Marriott at the Miami Airport. And right. this is for Orlando Montiel's group. Yep. Uh, again, called C five. So come and catch up with us. It doesn't have to be formal. Doesn't have to be at the event. But we will be in Miami for. I guess it'll be basically Wednesday night to Friday morning. Well, but that day of the event will probably be the best time to meet with us if you're in Miami or if you want to come visit Mm -hmm. with us. Because the other two days we're going to be uh, traveling. And when Julie and I are traveling, we're in travel mode. Yes. (laughs) So don't make us late to the airport. We're on mission. (laughs) Exactly. Well, so this week we are going to be talking about how to end the feelings of feeling overwhelmed. When you feel overwhelmed... When you're feeling a little bit like you're burning the candle at both ends, we're going to give you, I think it's 10 points? At least 10 points. At least 10 points on what you can do to turn that around. And sometimes uh, a lot of us who are the driver sorts out there, you won't acknowledge that you're feeling overwhelmed, but what's going to happen is you're going to start losing your elasticity of thinking and you're going to start losing your efficiency of work. And so you might need to look at yourself introspectively to see if you're not getting the same level of results that you normally get. And that might be a way that you're feeling overwhelmed. Some people, when they're feeling overwhelmed, they're just like, they hit a wall, they emotionally feel it and they're done. But again, getting back to the first group, a lot of you will feel that feeling of feeling overwhelmed and push through it. And what we're going to do is share with you guys some techniques to make it so that, yes, you can push through it, but the problem is, is if you don't stop and uh, be introspective and sort of maybe... you got to do a reset now and then. Exactly. you got to load some new software, some new patches in, because you might push through that feeling of overwhelm, but on the other side of that, you're essentially a, you know, a 50% capacity or you're not working at the highest level that you normally could. So again, these points are going to be designed, hopefully, to help you guys stay on track. And then even if you don't necessarily uh, psychologically acknowledge when you're feeling overwhelmed, you could still keep these things in the back of your mind as may- maybe omnipresent suggestions on how to run your life, frankly. That's right. And one of the symptoms that maybe you don't realize it during the day because you've gotten really good at powering through. And we have a lot of coaching clients that are like that. Well, we're like that. We're like that, you know. Uh, And so one of the symptoms that tells you that maybe you're reaching that uh, impetus is what we lovingly call the 3 a.m. real estate night sweats, where it doesn't catch up to you until you're trying to sleep in the middle of the night. Well, but that's exactly it, right? So when you start thinking about something constantly and your subconscious mind, your conscious mind are constantly just throwing around the mm-hmm. same things, and it's like a whirlwind of never-ending thoughts and emotions, that will uh, uh, essentially um, prevent any new ideas or thoughts or inspirations right. from entering in. And that ultimately becomes the problem. And uh, let's give them a real quick, for sure. example, mm-hmm. he, where we live in Puerto Rico, there's um, every, well, almost every uh, Sunday night, there's this huge hundreds of people gather on the beach and watch NFL football. And it's the whole thing's catered and there's tents up and it's really very nice. And it's, you know, people pay to do it's this. quite the thing. It, is, it started as just a group of like 25 people and now I bet you it's 250. It's At crazy. Least. Well, Julie and I were going to this, and what we found was is that every Monday, then we were, you know, if Sunday night we were on the beach hanging out with people. Come Monday, we were kind of wishing we had another day off because we had uh, allowed ourselves to not have. Uh, we put ourselves in a place where we weren't giving ourselves an opportunity to unravel, to relax. Yes. And so you got to know yourself, right? And for Julie and I being introverts, and you know, half of you are that way as well, you've got to be making sure you're spending time with your loved one or loved ones. Refill the cup. Refill the cup. Because mm-hmm. being around big groups of people for Julie and I is absolutely draining. It is, even though sometimes it's you guys and we love you. That's not the point. The point is that when you are naturally an introvert, you tend to be, your battery gets a little bit drained. And extroverts, it's funny, they're kind of the opposite. They get recharged around each other, and then, you know, they have to take some time off for different reasons. So either way, here are some techniques to help you. And But so ultimately, Mm -hmm. the way we refill our cup is really your first point. And so go ahead and talk about uh, point number one. 
Well, so mindset check, are you feeling overwhelmed or are you just surrounded by opportunity? And that theme is going to run throughout our uh, multi-podcast series this week. So point number one, follow Media Free Mornings. You hear us tell you this all the time. Ideally, Media Free Life, but we're going to dive in a little bit about this. So check what you're putting in your head. If it's beneficial to your business, sure, read it, listen to it. Obviously, our podcast, Housing Facts, Local Trends are all fine. But listen to podcasts of something that interests you in or out of the business and stay out of the news because the news isn't the news anymore. We've talked about that before. So I like to to listen to a variety, and you do too, a variety of different podcasts, many of them having nothing to do with real estate coaching or real estate in general, selling brokerages, anything like that. So I, I made a quick list of some of our favorites, and yep. I would be interested if you guys want to email us or text us what some of your favorites are. We actually picked up, there's some that you'll probably add to this list that we picked up on our trip, um, visiting all of these guys, telling us some of the things that they listen to. So one of our favorites is Revisionist History. That's Malcolm Gladwell. He's a very good author of other books, but he's got a great podcast. Um, there's one I listen to now and then called Articles of Interest, which is the history of fashion, totally off the menu, right? Uh, the Peter Schiff Show, which covers a lot of economic things. Invisibilia is an NPR show, actually, and that talks about, this is really totally off the menu, unseeable forces that control or influence human behavior. So that's kind of scientific and nerdy. And then there's the uh, driving your kids to school genre, okay? <laughs> so Radio Lab is, is a good one for adults, but there's Radio Lab for kids, and that has other scientific things. We listened to one about uh, an octopus the other day. Um, Julie's Library, that's not my library. That's actually Julie Andrews, if you remember ancient times of um, the Sound of Music and all of that. She reads from her library with her daughter and her granddaughter different stories. So we do that on the way to school. Um, How I Built This is interesting. Guy Raz, I believe that's related to NPR too, but How I Built This, he interviews different business owners. And, you know, again, it could be, I I listened to one by Warby Parker. I listened to one Airbnb, totally different stuff. Sticky Notes is one of my favorites. Classical music, if you were ever been baffled by, you know, you can only maybe listen to some classical for 20 minutes. Figure out why that is, is really interesting. Smart List with Jason Bateman is hilarious because I like him as an actor and he just has funny guests. And then the Joe Rogan experience. So lots of different variety. We picked up some new, uh, this Dark Horse by uh, Brett Weinstein is good. This is my, um, this one here is the one I like best right oh, now. Oh, All In. I couldn't remember that. Yeah, I, All I'm In. I can't even up. pronounce any of those names, but those guys. Yes. But it's the, it's the All In podcast. There's four different guys, and they I, I find that's very interesting how they handle their conversation about different topics. And there's a lot of others. I'm Julie and I are scrolling through all my podcasts, a lot, of car, a lot of car stuff. A lot of car podcasts. But really what the point is is what we're trying to do and what we intentionally do is Julie and I will often, with some of you, you guys give us great suggestions, we'll look for things that we know nothing about. And yes, the reason that's that the point. Exactly. And we're looking for things that aren't – again, we avoid politics basically. That's it. We yeah. just – anything to do with politics, we want nothing to do with. Because it's all basically, uh, essentially, it's it's useless. It serves mm-hmm. no purpose in our lives. It does not make it make make us better people, or does no. not make us better at what we do for a living. So we just don't include it in at any aspect, at any part in our daily lives. But here's where we have to be careful: is that all of us, especially as we get older, we do lose that elasticity of thinking, and we get essentially we get to the point where we believe everyone thinks like we believe, and our thoughts are the same thoughts that everyone mm-hmm. else has. That's right. And that's a huge mistake because again, what we're trying to show you here is sometimes when you're feeling burned out or sometimes you're feeling just maybe even a little bored, it's because you're having the same repetitious That's thoughts it. and you need to be introducing new ways of thinking and new ways. And again, we're not talking politics or any of this social stuff. We're just talking all these other just interests, big really, thoughts, you know, and you end up being a more interesting person. Yep. And I remember when we started doing some of this uh, in our real estate practice, you never know when you're going to be on an appointment with totally. somebody. And the reason that you hit it off is because you both resonated towards maybe some car thing or a piece of art or you see their their book collection and you have authors that you both like. So it makes you a more in-depth individual, which gives you more flexibility to deal with more people with more versatility. So And, and that's where you, get, you have more varied uh, you know, variety of friends with varieties of interests yeah, and things like sure. that. Um, right. Yeah. So this is so point number two. Make well, a, hang on one second. Also, sorry. Also, just so you know, I'm I have our book list is almost done. So oh, good. we'll be adding that. So we talked about podcasts, but certainly books as well. Well, so yeah. as far as books go, though, um, you know, this is something that a lot of people like to be braggadocious about uh, not reading fiction or listening yeah, to fiction. I, I've never quite understood that. Me neither. 
Yeah, it doesn't make any sense because really good fiction can be incredibly ins inspiring, yeah. especially science, uh, science, uh, science, uh, science fiction. Right. It makes you very creative, makes you think in different ways. I'm fighting a little bit of allergies, so forgive me, listeners. <laughs> and allergy medicine. Exactly. That. But the reality of it is, is that a lot of the science fiction stuff is going to be really fascinating, dystopian, utopian. It doesn't really mm -hmm. matter because a lot of the ideas that are essentially becoming reality now with regards to these, you know, 10, 20 years ago, no one would have believed the technologies that we are that we're mm -hmm. experiencing in our lives now. And yet science, science fiction authors were writing about these things, you know, 20, 30, even 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So the things you can read about now that are going to hypothetically take place in the future, uh, those science fiction authors aren't just pulling it out of the air. Most of them are spending a lot of time researching what essentially yeah. is the state of the art, state of the art. And that's what they're sort of scaling up in their minds, what might be commonplace in 20 or 30 years. That's it. And, you know, what's interesting is when you unplug from your normal grind of thought, and you're listening to a different podcast or you're reading a different kind of book that is giving you new thoughts, you have aha moments about something else you were working on in the business right. because you had unlocked your brain for a while and given it, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I think the freedom to think different thoughts. Yeah, well, I read an interesting article, just as an aside, that mm -hmm. someone was suggesting that everyone has to essentially have five hobbies. Hmm. You know, That's I thought that was kind of interesting. And, and we'll talk about that on another show. Mm -hmm. But it's along the lines of what we're talking about. Because sure. it frees your mind from essentially being in the hamster wheel of repetitious th thinking. Yes. Because the repetitious thinking and behavior does actually pay off over time. But the reality of it is it, you're more powerful and effective at it if you do give your op your brain an opportunity to check out of it for a little while. Mm -hmm. and, and then it do introduce your brain, uh, your, your thinking and your just your life, all these diverse, crazy, never, you know, you've never read a science fiction book in your life. You've never had any exposure whatsoever to, you know, any, uh, some of these things we're talking about. Well, why don't you listen to them? Make yourself, un out. make yourself uncomfortable. I mean, the, the, the book we're reading right now on the synchronicity, right? Is, yes. Yeah. That is not easy to uh, listen no, to. It's very I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I know, but isn't that great? Yeah, it is great. Cause I write things down and they go to, I, that I'm going to research and then I find out what that little term or what he was referring to. And then it puts everything else in context mm -hmm. and it has nothing at all to do with real estate. Which is, you know. Liberating. Liberating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So point number two, make a list of what you want to feel loved, appreciated, important, useful. Are you being the change you wish to see? Are you acting and behaving the way you wish to be treated and responded to? And one of the ways that you can get yourself into gratitude and kind of uh, break the pattern, make a shift of behavior is good for your business too. So that's writing five thank you or recognition cards per day, business and or personal. So Zig Ziglar said, getting knocked down in life is a given. Getting up and moving forward is a choice. So one of the ways that you can do that is to recognize other people. Well, so that's such a good point. So if you're not feeling something, if you're not, Julie said, you know, if you're not feeling loved, appreciated, important, useful, smart, if you're not feeling any of those things, the way to get what you want is by giving away what you want. And uh, that is literally what I'm saying. So if you're not feeling appreciated, if you're feeling um, maybe taken for granted, go show appreciation to other people. And the amount of appreciation you'll get back for having shown appreciation to that person is gonna be far beyond uh, what you felt yep. you were lacking. Because nobody really expects it. No, and the same goes with love. The same goes with any kind of thing that you want in your life. The way to get it is to give it. And, you know, Julie's example of, base, uh, of being overt by showing appreciation. That's point number three. Okay. Okay. Sorry. You're right. That's right. okay. So these are kind of related. So point number three, show overt, overt appreciation towards others by giving them what you want to feel from them. Give before you expect to receive. Now, here's where social media does have a good use. If you've noticed that your past client, who you're friends with Facebook or Instagram or what have you, that your friend's past client's kids just graduated or had a baby or got a promotion... This is your chance to show that you noticed. I, I was shocked. We talked about this the other day. I, you and I can't believe how many people will say something about our trip around here going on our walk or <sighs> yeah. in the gym. And we're always like, is that who we think it is? Who, who was that? And it's, you know, because they're, they're showing that they noticed and we, that makes us feel good. Well, again, it's the type of uh, when we do post on Instagram and Facebook, we're not doing uh, the types of things that other people in our industry do. We're, yeah. we're generally speaking, we're posting things that are on more on the personal side. Yes, that's and true. So people, At least on those pages. Yeah. Right. Well, we do. Mm -hmm. The public facing ones on our Instagram mm -hmm. page, we're just not just a bunch of motivational quotes. That's what most other people do that are in our yeah. space. We're actually showing them what, it, uh, you know, the experience we had. And that does create an interesting um, uh, level of familiarity that they have yes. with us. Mm -hmm. And we have had a, 
uh, numerous occasions, people that we sort of kind of maybe knew, mm -hmm. but they felt like they knew us because they've been following us on Instagram, especially as we did our trip around the country. Yes. And so they'll come up to us and they'll start having these random conversations about something that we posted, you know, two mm -hmm. months ago and we're in Montana or whatever. And the next thing you know, you're realizing that this person knows all of this stuff about you, you know, yeah. stuff right. you Let wanted me say to share. Things like your trip really inspired me to do something like right. that with my family the next summer. So I've been working on making sure that I pay attention to their stuff too with what they're up to. So but, uh, I'm going to just give somebody a sidestep on that one. Yeah. So showing you overt appreciation on the days and the, when people have life events does make sense. Mm -hmm. But the downside to that is if someone just has a baby or has a promotion, kids graduate from college, all these other examples you gave, they're going to be getting a lot of other people. That's true. And it's, it's a little polluted. It's going to be buried, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the best things to do is have unexpected moments of overt appreciation. Yes, that's that's awesome. where people really get blown away. Mm -hmm. You know, Julie does this all the time. You know, she'll compliment usually ladies on something that they're wearing or something like that. And then the next conversation is always, you know, and Julie's going to follow the follow uh, the Ford thing, right? Family, occupation, mm -hmm. recreation, dreams. But she does that to strangers. When we're about to fly to Miami, I'm sure she's going to strike up conversations with just about everyone she runs into, you know, just yeah. because it's fun and she's practicing and she sure. likes to get to know people. But yeah, if you really want to break through with that, um, you know, overt appreciation concept, do give people that little bit of appreciation when they're not expecting it. Um, and Julie did uh, point out another great thing. Do it over social. Just send them a quick note, direct message them. But a handwritten note, trust me, guys. It goes a lot further. When was the last time any of you got a handwritten note where someone was actually saying how much they appreciated you and why they appreciated you? Um, you're never going to throw that out. You're going to frame that. And, and so there's a book that I should have put in here that's called The Art of the Handwritten Note. I think that's the name of it. And it talks about when you do do these uh, cards and letters to be very specific. Don't just be like, Thanks, you know, like uh, I just run to our cleaning lady in Murphy, right? Thanks for doing such a great job. I really like how you paid attention to detail or something yeah. like that. Not just, hey, here's a check, right? So if you're going to do it, make it meaningful. Well, and, what, and that book helps a lot. And so this is another idea for you guys. Um, we take, Julie and I will take pictures of things and then we'll, uh, in, not Instagram, but well, it is the cold medicine, isn't it? To make my <laughs> brain okay, work slower. Uh, we will then uh, text that image to somebody, and that's the way we show appreciation. So if we see something that we think is uh, that that person will appreciate, it doesn't really matter what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be a sign, it could be flowers, it could be a sunset. Something that reminded you of them. Right. And we'll just take a picture, and then we'll, you know, send them the picture, and that's, and then we'll say, we were just thinking about you, wish you were here, or something like that. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. All right. So well, let's, this is going to be the last one, then I'll turn it over to you because I got to get ready for Facebook. Facebook Live. Point number four seems like duh, but here it is. Get more sleep. Listen to our podcast about sleep. It's uh, searchable. You're more likely to wreck your car from lack of sleep than you are from alcohol. That's a fact. There's a book called Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Sleep and Dreams by Dr. Matthew Walker. And he's been on a lot of podcasts about that as well. But he has a lot of very interesting facts and techniques in that book called, again, Why We Sleep. So I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, well, so, I mean, you're turning it over to me when I'm on cold medicine and I think I Good should luck. be taking a nap. <laughs> so here's the thing, guys. You guys can keep all of this in mind as you're uh, thinking about the rest of the year. The rest of the year is all about opportunities for 2022. It's not necessarily just about the holidays. It's not just about taking t uh, time off. So now we're four days into the fourth quarter. You've got to be asking yourself I and mean, you've got to be super honest with yourself. What do you think 2022 is going to be like for you? What do you, are you expecting to be a better year? Are, are you planning for it to be a better year? Okay, so you're planning for it to be a better year, but what, do you act, what steps are you actually taking to make it a better year for you next year? This is where the rubber meets the road. It's not just about you know thinking that you're going to somehow launch into next year and all the stars are going to align for you. This is the time of year, fourth quarter is the time of year, where you make it so you have to physically get up there and move the stars around so they're in alignment so when the year rolls over, you're more than ready. And one of the number one things all of you must be doing, and Julie and I are going to probably do part of this when we're on our uh, trip to Miami, is you've got to be completing your real estate treasure map. We do it every year. Sometimes we do it twice a year. And the real estate treasure, your real estate treasure map is absolutely positively the exact thing that's going to give you that sense of direction. You know, Julie mentioned we were just driving around the country for 60 days. And on that sojourn, had we not had GPS telling us where to go all the time, we would still be driving around someplace in the middle of Iowa. Probably I guarantee would have it. still been locked up in Canada. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We, have, we have accidentally crossed the bridge mm -hmm. of no return. But we had our GPS telling us to turn here or turn there. That is what your real estate treasure map is. It's your fill in the blank business and life plan. And the best part is we want to give it to you. It's absolutely free. All you've got to do is text the word Harris 
to 47372. Just text the word Harris to 47372. And when you do, we're going to text you. Actually, we're going to text you a link and then you're going to go to a hidden page. It's, it's not searchable. And then you're going to be able to download the real estate treasure map. That's it. No strings attached, no obligation. Just go ahead and download it. You've got to get this done. This is something that once you have it completed, and this is not some, you know, we talk about the treasure map all the time because it's that important. When you have the treasure map and you listen to our podcast and you read our book and then you become one of our coaching clients, you're going to see how everything is perfectly designed to work in harmony towards the accomplishment of your goals, the, the exceeding of your goals, hopefully helping you to think bigger so you can set even larger goals. That really is the objective of the treasure map. But when you get it done, you have a great sense of direction. And Julie, you can always tell with coaching clients when we get, totally. you know, what Absolutely. they do or don't have it. Well, they get addicted to it and then they start to rework it every quarter to six months yep. as Update they accomplish it. their goals, right? Faster. I mean, that's why it's called a treasure map. The map part shows you how to get there. And the treasure is your profit. That's the result of you following the map. So I think what you're saying is really critical that it's not about getting ready to get started right now. It's no. about getting the treasure map done and starting to actually take the actions that normally you'd wait until January to do. It's almost like, a, I don't want to call it a practice quarter because you're going to get results when you you know take the action, but get into the habits now. That way they're in place on January 1st, not getting ready to get started to someday feel like possibly pulling on the trigger on actually getting it done. And the other mistake a lot of people make this time of year, well, any time of year, is they basically put too much time into the will come. They yeah. will invest money in things that might someday, hopefully, somehow magically make them money, right? I would strongly suggest if you have a list, if you have a to-do list and any of those things on your to-do list do not lead directly to a paycheck in 60 days or fewer, or really maybe 90 days or fewer, you shouldn't do it. Nope. You should just never have it on your list Optional. in the first place. Optional, if you know, it, frankly, just don't do it because those are the types of things that when you have too many of those things cause you to feel overwhelmed because you're going to say, well, I never got my CRM project or my branding project done or I'm never, I'm, I feel like I'm so behind on social. Well, those are the types of things that you can actually not do and get greater results in your real estate business. But those are the very things that are covering up the things that you should be doing. And the real estate treasure yeah. map cuts through all that for They're you. They're procrastination excuses ultimately. Only if they know, right? Some people who are listening to our podcast, Julie, and this is the nation's number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents, but they don't know what they're supposed to be doing. They haven't learned it. That's why we have the treasure map, isn't it? Exactly. Well, yeah. and that's why we have our coaching program too. So go ahead and text the word Harris, H-A-R-R-I-S. Did I spell it right? And you did. <laughs> H-A-R-R-I-S to 47372. Text the word Harris to 47372. And we're going to text you back a link. And with that link, you can download, guess what? The real estate treasure map. Don't procrastinate on that, guys. Get that done. That should be a homework assignment for everyone. We will pick up where we left off today, tomorrow. In the meantime... Again, thank you for continuing to make this number one listen to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. We know we're being listened to now in 19 different countries, which is pretty, you know, it's, it's awesome. Um, and oh, yes, I know some of you in different countries, you can't text uh, Harris to 47372. And if that's the case, uh, do this. Just text me directly. Actually, don't text me directly. Um, I'll tell you what to do. If you want the treasure map and you can't download it and your, the text thing won't work in your uh, country, go ahead and email Tom, T-O-M, at timandjulieharris.com and just put treasure map in the subject line and I'll have them email it to you. So if the texting thing doesn't work and say, for example, Canada, then just go ahead and text Tom at timandjulieharris.com, Tom at timandjulieharris.com, and then he'll email you when you put treasure map in the subject line. He'll send to you the treasure map, and you can just print it off and fill it out there. In the meantime, you guys have a fantastic day. We'll talk with you on the show tomorrow. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.